This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 417, How to Make Friends as a Grown-Up, part one, by Lindsay Miller with nerdfitness.com. Hola, and welcome to my show where I help you optimize your relationships. I'm Joss Marie, and today we have part one of an awesome post by Lindsay Miller, a guest author on Nerd Fitness. And before we go any further, I just want to give you a little heads up that I'm super congested still, as if you can't tell. Um, we actually had the influenza in our household, and our poor babies, Colby and Talon, both ended up with ear infections. Talon also had bronchitis on top of it. But gratefully, they've both turned the corner, and hopefully Lee and I are only just a few days behind them. So back to the show. I love how I learn essential and valuable life lessons from Colby and Talon all the time, so I'm especially eager to share this post with you. So let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. How to Make Friends as a Grown-Up, Part 1, by Lindsay Miller with NerdFitness.com Being a little kid was kind of the best, wasn't it? Between mandatory nap time, pajamas as acceptable formal wear, and an abundance of chicken tenders, kids have a lifestyle that can only be called ideal. But all that great stuff aside, there's one aspect of childhood about which I've become even more nostalgic lately, making friends. About a year ago, I moved to a new city where I knew approximately no one. This is the fourth time I've made such a move, but only the first, where I didn't have school or a job to provide scores of people who were contractually obligated to interact with me. Starting from scratch was a daunting prospect, but with a bit of inspiration from some we humans, I figured out a few things along the way that helped me, and might help you too. Today, we're going to learn how to make friends like we did when we were little. How do you level up from mere acquaintances to actual buddies? There's a lot that we big kids can learn from the smaller versions of ourselves, but let's start with three main lessons. Lesson number one, play in the right sandbox. Kids know what they're into. Spend five minutes at a playground and it's clear. The daredevil is happily flinging herself across the monkey bars while she pretends not to hear her parents' admonitions. The future members of the rebellion are wielding lightsabers clearly disguised as tree branches and the dreamy introvert is spending peaceful creative time under his favorite tree. Ask your family what you were like as a kid, and they'll tell you. There was probably stuff you liked, stuff you didn't, and not much in between. So why as adults do we so often do things that we know we don't want to do? I'm not talking about life necessities like bills and laundry, or horizon-expanding experiences like traveling alone or learning a new skill. I'm talking about going to a crazy dance club when we'd really rather be at the premiere of The Avengers. Or joining a monthly networking group when all we want to do outside of work is talk about anything but work. Think about where you'll be happiest, most at ease, and have the most to say. Then, go to there. Much of the time when trying to meet new people, we're encouraged to just get out and do stuff. As we consider which things to go get out and do, let's listen to the little kid inside of us and stick with what we're into. This dramatically increases the chances of us meeting true friends and decreases the chances that we'll be miserable in the process. Careful readers will notice that this is exactly the same principle behind Steve's suggestion of the best workout plan, the one you'll actually stick with. Whether we're getting in shape or making new friends, it shouldn't feel like work or torture, and it doesn't have to. In fact, a group of nerdy strangers who met up for Camp Nerd Fitness last year might normally tell you that they suck at making friends. Turns out, they just needed to be in the right atmosphere. While playing in the right sandbox would be my advice to you at any point in history, there's truly never been a better time to make it happen than today. Wherever you live and whatever you're into, a group of like-minded people is often just a few clicks away. Check out meetup.com or websites slash social media covering local events for some ideas that strike your fancy. Seriously, we're nerds. Let's use technology to our advantage. Lesson number two. Ditch your filter. Something else that's evident fairly immediately with kids is that they lack the little gatekeeper between brain and mouth, which occasionally informs us I should not say this thing. My niece demonstrated this in an especially salient manner on a recent family trip when she pointed to and verbally addressed, quote, the baby in my belly. Two things I should quickly mention. One, I was in a bathing suit at the time. And two, I was not then nor am I now pregnant. Having not received the reaction she expected, she quickly followed with, That's okay, my belly sticks out too. To be clear, I'm not suggesting that line as a go-to method for making friends. 
but it's illustrative of something I do recommend, which is saying the things that other people don't or won't say. Take, for example, the following two scenarios, set at a volunteer event. Scenario number one, them. Nice to meet you. Hope to see you next time. You. Yeah, sounds good. Scenario number two, them. Nice to meet you. Hope to see you next time. You. Yes, but you know what? Study yourself because I'm actually going to do the thing where I get your number and text you the next time I hear about something similar happening nearby. Somebody's got to do it, and it's going to be me. Or what about these? Set at, say, Camp Nerd Fitness. Scenario number one. Them. Bye. Nice talking to you. You. See you. Scenario number two. Them. Bye. Nice talking to you. You. You too. But actually, wait, you said you're from Austin? I have family there and go there once or twice a year. So brace yourself, because I'm now going to do the thing where I ask you for your email address. And I happen to be the one person in the universe who actually follows up on these things when I say I will. So you're probably going to get a random email from me a few weeks from now. Fair warning. The reference to doing the thing both frames your upcoming request and slightly distances you from it. It puts the semi-awkward act of exchanging contact information up on stilts for a second, leaving you and the person you're talking to down on the ground together, pointing up at it and chuckling. While it's additionally true that there's a confidence level involved in telling rather than asking, it could just as easily be posed as a question. For example, what if instead of just saying goodbye and never running into you again, I do the thing where I get your email and reach out the next time I hear about something fun going on? So often we let little connections lapse and fizzle out because each person assumes that the other would reach out if they wanted to, so then neither one does and then the other doesn't either. Be the one who does. Do the thing. To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled How to Make Friends as a Grown-Up by Lindsay Miller with NerdFitness.com. I love what Lindsay says about having no filter. Isn't it so true how kids lack a gatekeeper between their thoughts and spoken words? I'm sure many of you, just like myself, have had experiences with our littles who casually blurt out things they shouldn't. The thing is that we're only shortchanging ourselves if we do things that we actually don't want to do. By listening to the little kid inside of us, we'll have a better gauge of staying honest with ourselves and sticking to what we're really interested in. This will give us a better chance of making genuine new friendships as adults. And with that, I hope you're learning as much as I am, and I'm looking forward to sharing the rest of Lindsay's tips with you tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.